on Nationwide this evening in the news and a Waterford newspaper which has been bringing the local news for 150 years celebrates its birthday. You're in the army now but what is life in uniform like for our women soldiers? And the County Fermanagh man who lovingly delved into what he calls the old ago to bring us the story of Fermanagh in times past. Now very often we find ourselves intrigued by something which somebody has produced, maybe because of the quality of the work, the inherent uh, creativity and innovation, or the dedication and time it took to produce it. Well, our Alistair Jackson has been uh, discovering up in uh, County Fermanagh a book by Johnny McKechnie called In the Old Ago, which demonstrates all of those qualities. Open this book and you're certainly in the old ago, back in a past that's been brought alive through a changing mix of detailed line drawings and handwritten text. The book covers everything from Fermanagh townlands and folklore to archaeological sites, old crafts, old ways and old buildings. It's the work of Johnny McKegney and has had a long gestation. It's taken over 40 years. And in the beginning anyway, it wasn't planned, it just happened. I didn't set out to do anything like it. I just sat down one evening, I was 27 years of age, at the table with a pen and a bit of paper and started to draw. Johnny had and has an unquenchable curiosity about his county's past. And he loved drawing, so together these two traits produced the stream of A3 pages that were to become in the old ago. And its contents came from actual contact with people and places, through Johnny walking the land and hearing stories of local history from local people. I would go into an area that I wasn't okay with and uh, I would just go up to a door and start talking to the people and would bring me in, make a cup of tea and uh, tell me all went on in their area or their field or their farm. And of course, he got a lot of information from people he knew well, too. People like Mary Ann McCormick. This is the Edenmore Mass Rock, and like many of her neighbours, Mary Ann's convinced that in this field no animal ever gets sick or dies. That's all I said. And I know there fields, there was cattle would maybe get sick and maybe die and all, but not here, no place, even to now. And there's a man has the grass off it, and uh, he has cattle on, suckling cows and all, but no, no, no animals ever got sick on it. So it must be a holy field or land. The Wilsons don't live here anymore, but their old home was one of Johnny's finds, and he later got confirmation of its uniqueness from an expert. Normally, cottages only had one bed outshot. This has four. Bed outshots were very practical. You were in the kitchen, you were beside the fire, you could have a sick old person, a sick child, very, very useful, and they were in the, when the crack was going on, they were chatting, they could hear all was going on, they weren't up in a room trying to listen to what was going on up there. And as he did with all his discoveries, he sketched it and added text. This is Bannon's corn mill. It's nearly 60 years since corn was ground here, but James Bannon remembers when it was a working mill. Well, that trap door there, the corn was brought up on that windlass. And there's the two hoppers over there. The dust of six decades mantles the few remaining bits of milling machinery. It's quiet now. 
Once it was a place busy with horse traffic, where the community met. And in a settled community like this, family memories are transmitted down the generations. James is 90 now, and he remembers hearing about the start of the famine. James's grandfather had been going by horse and cart to collect his parents. And the time he was to leave, he couldn't get out because it was a terrible stormy night. And that was the night that the blight hit. And on the road down, way down the shore road or wherever, he could smell the, the potato stalks rotten. Johnny's bookshelves are filled with the notes he's made on his walks, and cassette tapes of his interviews are piled wherever he can find space. When a hobby's a passion, it consumes time. Johnny says his family understand. Three of my wife, she encouraged me to, but half time she would say, would you go out and visit James Bannon? And I don't know whether it was to get me out of the house or whether it was to let me carry on what it was after. I never figured that one out. Certainly, Teresa indulges his interests, including another passion he has for collecting old craft tools. And she accepts with a good nature the time they all take up. I, I suppose I'm just so used to it that I, I really don't notice that much. I give out an odd time because he doesn't do anything for me around the house. I think he's only bit in the last couple of weeks discovered the bin that has to be taken in the night. I think the ones where we, have it, where we put the yellow stickers are all in the first book. Sister Adele Bannon was amazed when she first came across Johnny's work. The most striking thing was that they were totally different to anything I had ever seen before. I had never seen anyone record by drawings. To me it was a unique and a rare talent and it was crying out to be published. She had some publishing contacts and that's how, in the old ago, became a reality. For her, preserving the past like this is very important. And that includes the past of people like James Bannon, who once ploughed with horses and who put the ache of no longer being able to do that into a poem. Time has went on, the horses are gone, on me I'm well on my way. No use to lament for the days that are gone, every man is his day. And we regret to say that Johnny McKegney, who appeared in this evening's Nationwide, passed away shortly after the programme was recorded. We on Nationwide would like to offer our condolences to his family. May he rest in peace. That ends our programme for this evening. Do join us again at the same time on Wednesday next. Until then, from Waterford City and from all of us in the Nationwide team, a very good evening to you. On next Wednesday's programme, the story of the Limerick nun who was quietly pursuing her vocation with the homeless in Britain, and then the Queen emerged to thank and honour her. The newspaper which keeps the Irish and Britain informed about their community and matters back home celebrates a birthday. And the Clara man who has kept a pictorial record of the life of the Irish community in Britain down through the decades.